You're listening to The Luxury Item, the podcast on the business of luxury and the people and companies that are shaping the future of the luxury industry. Here's your host, Scott Kerr. The global health crisis stemming from the novel coronavirus pandemic has caused far-reaching negative economic impact across industries. The travel industry has been no exception. Travel demand is languishing at about a quarter of last year's levels. COVID-infected rates are skyrocketing in much of the U.S., and some cities and states are imposing new travel restrictions. However, there are certain indicators pointing to a potential long-term growth in one area, and that's private air travel. There was a significant spike in the use of private aviation in the first half of 2020, born largely from wealthy travelers working to transport family members out of infected areas that had severely limited or shut down commercial air travel. In fact, over the Memorial Day weekend, one of the busiest travel times in the United States in years past, traffic in the private jet industry was 58% of the volume from the same time last year. That's according to Argus, a company that tracks aviation data. But commercial flights fared far worse over the holiday, plunging to 12% of the 2019 levels. For years, jet service providers have ferried corporate executives and wealthy leisure travelers who paid high fees for the privacy and security. Now those same companies are shifting to meet rising demand from people worried about getting on a commercial flight. Many of the largest top private jet operators in the world have all reported significant increases in new customers. But... As the United States and other countries around the world return to business as usual, will there be another surge in private aviation activity as flyers are anxious to secure their business interests and resume their luxury vacation plans? My special guest today on the Luxury Item Podcast is a successful businessman, leader, aviation industry expert, and military veteran who knows all about the private aviation business. Glenn Gonzalez is the founder and CEO of Jedit. Launched in 2018, Jedit is a Greensboro, North Carolina-based aviation company that boasts a new hybrid ownership model that provides individuals the opportunity to own a fraction of the aircraft. Glenn has deep experience in aviation, including serving as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, being a pilot and flight leader for a squadron of F-15 fighter jets. He went on to fly as a sales demonstration pilot for Gulfstream Aerospace and then serving as Honda Aircraft Company's sales manager for the Northeast USA. Glenn also participated as an active member of the U.S. Embassy Kyrgyz Republic team while deployed during Operation Enduring Freedom. Hello, Glenn. Thanks for joining me on the show. Scott, thank you so much. I look forward to our conversation today. I am really thrilled to have you on. Uh, First, I want to thank you for your service. Appreciate everything you've done. And I'm so excited to hear about um, a little bit about your past. And you have a very interesting background. And of course, Jedit and the world of private aviation. I know you've been in, in uh, aviation for a while. I'm curious, is when did you first get that aviation bug? <laughs> well, uh, I, I have loved aviation and all things aviation since I was a kid. Uh, as far as I can remember, whether it was with uh, an airplane or wings uh, or a cape or a space shuttle, I, I've wanted to fly. And I, I'm not sure where that came from, but if I could revisit the third grade and the Uh, book covers that I used to have over my school books. I I had airplanes and spaceships drawn on them. Um, My mom will tell you stories of how I I would try to jump out of trees with a a pillowcase on my neck and uh, (laughs) believe that I could fly. And so aviation and the the skies and and the clouds have always been uh, in my sights. And I'm very fortunate and blessed to have had an opportunity to have over now uh, 20 years as an aviator and uh, now to run Jedit. Yeah, I mean, you you were um, you in the U.S. Air Force as a fighter pilot, then worked for Gulfstream and Honda Aircraft. Did you, at what point did you think, or if you ever thought that someday you were going to run your own aviation company? You know, I, it, it is not something that I've thought of um, at the time as you're going through. Uh, one thing I do know though is I constantly pursuing your passions I have always been very focused on going after those things that I was interested in so if wanting to fly wanting to play college basketball wanting to go to the Air Force Academy uh, wanting to study human factors engineering uh, wanting to go after each one of those things and get as close to whatever dream that was in front of me uh, that, that, that I could find and 
and what I was passionate about. Uh, in doing that, uh, each step along the way, you know, I, I've done my best to make good decisions, to be disciplined, and to figure out how to get to those goals. And in pursuit of one goal, it's led to the next thing. And I, I've had a chance to travel the world in private jets uh, as a, an operator, as a sales salesman. Uh, I've had a chance to shoot missiles from aircraft and uh, of course simulated, I didn't have to defend our nation in that manner, but um, I, I've done some amazing things in aircraft that 99% of the world uh, has not had an opportunity to do, and in some cases has never even thought to do. And so I'm very blessed and fortunate for that. And uh, that's really how I ended up with Jetta. The pur pursuit of those passions along the way have introduced me to new things and uh, I, continually uh, just continue to go and try to find the next uh, passion and Jetta is where we are today and it's a, a lifelong passion now <laughs> that yeah. uh, didn't start with Jetta. Yeah it seemed like uh, you were destined to do this and so why did you launch Jetta? Like what part of the aviation sandbox did you want to play in that you saw that nobody else was playing in? Well, I think the, the answer starts a little bit further back with my career in aviation. Um, starting in the Air Force, I, I absolutely loved flying fighters. It was a tremendous experience, but it really didn't uh, allow you to share the experience. Uh, flying fighters, uh, although you're defending the nation and uh, you're supporting our, our, our country and our government, uh, it, it's wonderful, but it is limited in how much you can share with the person next to you. Right. Um, and so that allowed me the freedom to think, you know, well, what if I'm not flying fighters? What am I more passionate about than flying fighters? And, and that was my family, the opportunity to spend more time with my daughters at the time, who were four and two, to be uh, at more of their music concerts uh, or uh, sporting matches, whatever it is that, that they are doing. I wanted to be there and be present. Uh, so at that time, I chose my family instead of uh, the active duty military, and I, I still serve in the reserves, mm -hmm. but uh, that passion led me uh, to Gulfstream. And uh, again, flying around the world was a great experience, but it, it pulled away from that time with my wife and girls, with my family, my parents, my sister. And so uh, to make a longer, long story short, mm -hmm. uh, I, I started looking for opportunities that would still provide my family with the needs that we wanted uh, and, and the things that we wanted. And I, I landed in sales. Uh, and that was where I ended up at Honda Aircraft Company. And I heard the same thing over and over again. Glenn, this airplane is a masterpiece. I love this airplane, but it's more airplane than I need. Can you help me find a partner? I, I don't want to buy a $6 million airplane and only use it for 30 days out of the year. Can you help me find a way to reduce my cost of ownership? And after hearing that time and again, my co-founder and I, uh, he heard the same thing where he was selling for Honda outside of the U.S. in the uh, eastern half of the world. And so Jetit was formed from a need in the marketplace, uh, a knowledge of a superior product and an innovative business model that we pulled together uh, between the two of us. If you could explain to listeners who are perhaps unfamiliar with uh, the whole private jet fractional ownership model and talk about jet it's a hybrid fractional ownership model and how it's different sure uh, there are a number of different ways that you can have access to private aviation uh, the first of course is owning the entire aircraft yourself incredibly expensive labor intensive uh, and uh, also requires a, a lot of staffing and time uh, the next segment of that, one of the things that eliminates some of the labor and the time are the traditional fractional models. Those traditional fractional models are such that you can buy a fraction or a piece of the airplane uh, and someone else does all of the operations and pilot management. Uh, they take out the time and the labor and the people aspect of it, but uh, the cost is almost in some cases equivalent to owning an entire aircraft. Mm -hmm. So th then you have on-demand travel or charter users or jet cards. Uh, and those are for the individuals who uh, typically don't have a need for a lot of travel. Uh, but 
it's uh, very expensive as well. Um, and it's not consistent. The experience is inconsistent. Uh, the aircraft that shows up may not be what you expect it to be. Oftentimes it's an open fleet and it could be a, a 25 year old airplane that doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't create the same consistent experience. Uh, Jetit, we're a hybrid model. We actually fit in between all of those different types of ownership. Um, we have the whole aircraft ownership piece in that our owner pilots can participate in our red jet squadron. They can fly their own airplane uh, mm. next to one of our captains. Uh, the fractional piece is they, they're not buying the entire aircraft. We've eliminated all of the headache and pain of aircraft ownership, uh, as well as a, a significant amount of the cost. Um, and the last piece of that is we have a, a buyback guarantee that uh, provides you with some predictability. Uh, we are a closed fleet solution with the uh, Hypertech Honda Jet Elite, and it's uh, safe, comfortable, quiet, spacious. And so you have a consistent experience with our team members uh, who've been taught how to engage with uh, passengers and to, to make you feel at home. It's your private flight department. Uh, whereas if you own the entire airplane, but you don't have to own the entire airplane. So traditionally, fractional ownership is is based on hours, correct? And I think yours is a little bit different. It's based on days, owning by day. Uh, absolutely. Uh, going back to those those discussions with those individuals interested in buying the entire airplane, Glenn, really what I need is uh, to be able to justify this, I need to be able to fly from New York to Chicago, have a meeting in Chicago, then I need to fly down to Arkansas and ha meet with our, our distributor or our manufacturer supplier in Arkansas, and then I need to make it back home uh, in the evenings. With a days-based model, you can do all of those things, and at our $1,600 an hour rate, it now becomes justifiable to have access to a private jet for the entire day. Essentially, you're treating it like we treat our cars and run errands. Uh, I was in DC earlier this week and was stuck in traffic even during this uh, COVID environment. Right. Uh, an hour in traffic uh, mm. is an hour versus an hour in the airplane. I, I can fly from New York to DC in, in 35 minutes, be on the ground and very close to wherever it is that I'm trying to go, uh, that being the nearest airport uh, in the area. Uh, so now with our days-based model, individuals can actually run errands with our aircraft, but it's those business owners that need to make multiple stops. They need to get the maximum amount of productivity out of the uh, travel for that day. And that's what we limit, offer. Do you limit the number of uh, days that they can buy? Can they just hoard days and just put it in, you know, put it away for a rainy day? And, or did you, you know, how, do, how yeah, does that it, work? Or does that, it make that's you a put great, a limit on a cap on it? Yeah, there's, that's a great question. We try to make sure to right size the experience for each owner. Um, and so our sales team, are, we're serving as consultants. We're serving as subject matter experts uh, in the time and travel industry. I say time because that is our number one luxury that we can offer uh, to anyone. Uh, so understanding what their needs are uh, for our owners, it, it provides us with the opportunity to choose the right share size for them. And the number of days are commensurate with the size of share that you buy. Got it. So let's talk about what's been going on in the last four months. And you know, every, every industry has been upended um, and the, particularly the aviation industry. You know, what has been the demand for your service been like since the pandemic breakout? Um, and how is JETIC keeping up with that demand? Yeah, yeah it's uh, such a, a trying time across all industries uh, right now, even in our industry. Unfortunately, there have been a number of companies that have closed, shuttered their doors and windows and uh, they're, they're in some cases have gone out of business. Um, we've, we've been very fortunate to have a model that allows us to continue to operate, uh, to be asset light, if you will. And we have actually grown during this time frame, uh, not just from an operational standpoint, but we've added team members. Uh, we've added 16 individuals since the start of COVID, that being pilots, uh, that being some of our senior leadership within our team. Uh, and 
we have uh, increased our sales, have been up 300%. Uh, right. Our charter activity has been up 5x uh, from this same time frame last year. So we're, we're really uh, encouraged by the response to the market uh, or, or the response of the market to what we bring to the table. And what we found is a lot more repeat travelers, uh, right. people who have come back to us uh, as owners, as um, as charter users, and uh, of course, an, an increase in activity in reference to our sales as well. And uh, how about new flyers? <laughs> lots of uh, new charter users, uh, lots of new interest for potential share owners. Um, and so we, we've been very happy with uh, how the market has reached out to us. And we, we're typically very quiet and communicating. Yeah, yeah, what questions do they ask you, some of the new flyers who've never either have taken a private jet before, maybe have taken a couple of times before as, as a guest? Yeah, you know, I think all of us uh, around the world now are thinking, how can I best protect my, my family, my friends, the people that are with me? So the first question that people want to know is, what are you doing, Glenn, to sanitize and to make sure that my family is safe? Uh, so the safety extends now beyond just the pilots and their experience, beyond the aircraft and, and the weather. Uh, it also includes the environment. How healthy is the environment? And so it's an easy response for us. We started the COVID pandemic um, in, in March when uh, China first started to talk about uh, the first, or we started first talking about the first cases being here in the U.S., uh, we outsourced and, and worked with Latitude Aero, which is a, a company local to us mm -hmm. with an extensive experience in interiors. And uh, we had them teach us, all of our pilots, we had them teach uh, our cleaning company and our detailing company how to make sure that the airplanes are sanitized before and after every single flight, how to make sure that they're deep cleaned on a more, on a more frequent rotation uh, than they were previously. Uh, to make sure that we create a safe environment. So that's the first question. Um, and then from there, they want to know, well, will, will you provide a, an additional service to us? Can you make sure that we don't have to take an Uber or a car or, or a taxi? And, and that's just part of what we do inherently. We have a client experience team, and it's a 24-7 concierge. We'll pick you up at home. We'll have a preferred vendor that has a sanitized vehicle bring you to the airport uh, to eliminate the need to fly or to, to travel in uh, some other vehicle. Um, and we'll, we'll control as many of the touch points as we can. If we need to arrange uh, for a meeting room for you, we'll do that and we'll coordinate with that venue to make sure that that area is also cleaned and sanitized for you. So, so they're looking for essentially, you know, contactless end-to-end -end solutions. To the, to the maximum extent possible. And right. I think our business model being a days-based service lends to that exceptionally well. In a lot of cases, people are able to go out, have their meetings, and then return home without having to wait in the queue for uh, a hotel or wait in the queue for a, a taxi line there in New York or in DC at the airport. So uh, it's, it's mitigating and minimizing the potential touch points that they can be exposed. Right. And what is the demographic makeup of the uh, Jetit customer and have you, has it changed over the past year? Um, it, it's, uh, it's more of the same. Oftentimes it's the small and medium sized business owner, but we are universal. Uh, we fit the large corporate outfits that may already have aircraft. Uh, what they have found is with Jetit, uh, they can utilize us to provide a private transportation solution to a larger segment of their uh, employee base. Uh, so now more senior managers or vice presidents within a company have access to private travel. Uh, on the other end, you have the recreational flyers who are looking to move their parents home to meet them uh, and to bring them closer to them or to go and visit with their parents. Um, as you know, the pandemic continues to uh, hopefully soon subside. Uh, so you're and seeing then, more families? Then, absolutely. We're seeing uh, entire families traveling that oftentimes would travel uh, and buy uh, four first-class seats. Um, they are now jumping in, and you'll, we'll see a family of four and a dog uh, mm -hmm. flying with us from 
uh, New York to South Florida. And then as the pandemic has moved, moved south, uh, they've reached back to find a, another uh, flight back to New York to where things are hopefully continuing to settle. And I know one of the things you're hoping for, I would say in the next, you know, when this does settle is that people get comfortable, the ones that have, especially the new customers that are, that have been comfortable with, uh, with this aren't, won't go back to commercial aviation. Uh, absolutely. I, I think uh, in, when we built the business model, Scott, my, my co-founder and I, what we recognized was Jetta is really the natural evolution of transportation. Uh, by that, I mean, we are all looking for more efficiency, more autonomy or control when we travel. Uh, just like we could all walk to work in the mornings, but we don't. We want to hop in our cars so we can get there as quickly as possible. Uh, we could all take the airlines, but there are TSA challenges, term waiting in the terminal, and uh, now flying on the aircraft with a number of people that we don't know that create health challenges or concerns. Um, and so by having a private sol travel solution, you're only flying with the people that you invited to join you, your family, your friends. Uh, it's fast, so you're to and from your destination uh, as quickly as, as we can get you there. It is a jet, so you really typically can't beat uh, that. Um, and it's, it's smart, because if you wanna go out and return home, you can do so. So it, it's the natural evolution of transportation. I foresee that this will be the case, uh, and companies like Jetit providing a cost-effective um, private jet solution will continue to grow, and you'll continue to see us um, uh, scale very quickly. That's great. And if you will look over the past four or five months um, since the pandemic started, you look back and say, you know, you know, if you want to come up with like a list of lessons learned that either you were prepared for or not prepared for and adjusted on the fly. What were some of the lessons that you've learned that perhaps will help shape your company for the future? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the first thing that comes to mind to that question, Scott, is uh, we are doing everything that we can to make sure that um, people are well taken care of and it, it's only accentuated our business model, private, fast, smart. People are now more aware of what we're doing. They've been looking for us. Um, so, so part one of the answer to your question, over the last four to five months is we were prepared for this and the market was waiting for something like Jetit. Uh, mm -hmm. But the other piece to that is, uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, we've been growing during this time and our pursuit in bringing on additional talent onto our team is in preparation for the other side of COVID. We are running towards the flames. And that's, I guess, something that I learned from my time in the military. Uh, you, you have to run towards your challenges and take them on. Right. And this is a challenge for us all globally. And we've invested in our team. We've kept everyone that we started with. Uh, we've grown uh, our workforce in the process. And uh, we've been working exceptionally hard to prepare for the other side of COVID, if you will, there will be a day when uh, it is no more. And um, given that we are on the leading edge of this change in, in transportation, uh, where people are looking for more autonomy, uh, we'll be there and we'll be prepared and ready to continue to support and uh, continue to grow with them. Have you learned any lessons when it comes specifically customer service? Yeah, we, we have uh, two things that are, are near and dear to us. The first, operate safely. The second, make sure our travelers are happy. Um, of course, everyone is genuinely concerned in making sure that whatever the environment is, is safe. Uh, so from a, a, an experience standpoint, that's always been our making sure that people are happy has always been part of our, uh, our mantra on a daily basis. But in, in this particular case now, we've recognized that we have to be more adaptable and flexible and in tune with what their needs are, specifically uh, having hand sanitizer on the aircraft, uh, communicating what it is that we're doing to make sure that the airplanes are uh, serviced and cleaned. And, and that begins with our team communicating internally, having checklists to make sure that these things have been accomplished uh, so that we can identify uh, to our, our travelers, uh, here's what we're doing for you. So right. uh, I would say just being better communicators 
um, in, in line with what we normally do. You know, we were talking before about these different models and business models and fractional ownership models that have popped over the popped up over the past several years. And it almost seems like it's a democratization of private aviation, private aviation that's, that's been emerging. That's a disruption in itself. And what you're doing is disrupting the market. Where do you think the next disruption will come from? And how will technology play a role in that disruption for, for your business? Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's um, a, a guy who does a lot of speaking, uh, a gentleman by the name of Tony Seba. And mm-hmm. Tony Seba is a, a Stanford professor, I believe. And he outlines a disruption as a leap in technology or the combination of a leap in technology, a business model that's innovative and a market that's ready for each of these items. Um, and the Honda Jet is, it is a phenomenal aircraft. Uh, and it has all of the uh, things that you want in a private jet. And I can speak to that from my time at Gulfstream, having flown and operated and helped sell the best airplanes in the world. You have exclusively um, Honda Jets, correct? That is correct. We are yeah. exclusively a Honda Jet fleet. So is that we unique? have the, it, it is, it is. We are the largest fleet operator uh, for the Honda Jet uh, worldwide. And we aim to continue to be so. Um, so you, you have this leap in technology, our innovative business model. Um, knowing what I know from an engineering uh, degree and background and a graduate degree at Embry-Riddle, uh, studying aviation, um, I, the, the Honda Jet is going to be hard to beat in this category of aircraft. Why is uh, that? So until we have, um, at the end of the day, Scott, it's about physics. Uh, if I want to move uh, six people, um, that's uh, essentially 1,200 pounds on average people in bags, uh, it requires a lot of energy to move 1,200 right. pounds of anything from uh, one spot to the next. The faster I move it, the more precise and uh, better equipment that I have. The larger and more precise equipment, the more fuel that's required to power it. Uh, So what's necessary in this particular case, the Honda Jet is the most efficient and the fastest vehicle that also provides you with an experience that is desirable uh, for a private luxury experience. And uh, so that's why I call it a a hyper-technologically advanced (laughs) airplane. Uh, I don't consider it a high-tech aircraft. And uh, because of the design of the airplane, Mr. Fujino uh, masterfully engineered it, uh, and, and Honda's done an amazing job. Uh, it's it's going to be hard to beat for a long time to come. You know, it seems like um, these days that industries that can offer a product or service that can market itself as efficient, flexible, cost-effective, and a safer alternative are really better positioned for a post-COVID world. So do you think those factors contribute in the long-term rise in demand for private air travel and your, and your services? Absolutely, Scott. That, that is exactly who we are. Cost-effective, reliable, consistent. Um, that, those are all traits that we would describe for who we are. And um, that's what people want at the end of the day. If I have to be somewhere, uh, maybe I need to get to uh, a family event. Uh, I, I, I want a cost-effective way to do it. I don't want to have to grind my teeth uh, because I, I had to pay an arm and a leg to make that happen. I don't want to have to make a decision between life and cost um, and mm-hmm. being able to provide that consistently uh, at, at a reasonable price point uh, is, is who we are. So what do you say to someone who, you know, has flown privately a few times or not at all and, or, you know, really have never bought into the whole time savings, privacy and efficiency of it, but are now taking a fresh view of private aviation? What aviation? What's your pitch? Yeah, it's a great question. Obviously, everyone has a different interest and need. And so the, the first question is simply, what is it that you're using it for? Um, and recognizing the value that begins there. Uh, the value of what we can offer is more time in your day. If, uh, if, if I can give you back five hours of your life uh, in, uh, each week, uh, I, I've given you back 20 hours a month. What would you do with those 20 hours of time? 
Um, and, and that's, that's a remarkable experience that we can provide over that person who's been in the airlines, who's spending uh, an hour to get to the airport an hour early. Uh, then they are sitting in the terminal for an hour. Then they're traveling to a uh, connection, uh, which are limited these days. Uh, and they're sitting in the air connection airport for an hour and then they're traveling for another hour. They've just lost five hours of their day Whereas with us, they show up to the airport, they get on the airplane and fly away. They're at their destination in 45 minutes, three hours time. Uh, whereas it would have taken them twice that or even more in some cases flying commercially. Uh, so it, essentially it's what's the value of your time um, and what are you going to do with that time is right. the other piece to that. So the COVID boom, and demand for privatization seems like an opportunity for growth in the industry now. So how, you know, as, as you know, as, as these, we're seeing these, as these stay at home orders ease, how can private air travel sort of ride these positive tailwinds and continue to grow as an industry? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, the main thing that we and the entire industry have to make sure to do, um, and it, although it seems simple, there are a lot of challenges challenges uh, to manage these things. The first is to make sure that we're controlling the environment uh, to the maximum extent possible. Uh, cl d cleaning the airplanes in line with the CDC recommendations, creating a safe space for passengers. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is make sure that uh, we are uh, providing that consistent level of, of service. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the airlines are a high or excuse me, a low margin business. Um, so one of the things that's going to give from the airlines is the amount of service that you receive. So providing a higher level of service uh, above and beyond of uh, what you, uh, of, above and beyond what the commercial airlines were already providing uh, and providing a level of experience that everything that you might want is taken care of for you. And there's no additional cost for that. Uh, are, are, those are things that we have to do. And so it's a lot of effort that goes on behind the scenes to coordinate meals, to coordinate uh, the transportation from the airport, to coordinate uh, venues, uh, and then return someone back home. And all of those things to happen on time, on schedule, like clockwork, um, that's what we have to do as an industry. Do it's a lot of effort. Yeah. Do you think investing in marketing would also help not only in, in the individual aviation companies, but the industry itself, um, the associations that are involved in it to do more marketing of private aviation? I, I think so. Our industry does a very good job. Uh, the National Business Aviation Association, uh, NBAA, uh, Gamma, General Aircraft Manufacturers Association, uh, they do a great job of communicating to the market uh, the benefits of private travel. Uh, each company now has to go out and do their part uh, but collectively, uh, we need to help uh, adjust the mindset of how private transportation uh, can be of a benefit. It's not just a luxury tool. As I mentioned earlier, it's something that you can use as an errand uh, or as a tool to run your errands uh, to con connect you with more of the country in, in a day's time. And so uh, sharing the benefits of private travel uh, are, are something's one of the things that I think we can do better as an industry. Great. And my final question, which I ask, some, I'll ask all my guests, is the luxury item question. And this should be an interesting answer. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> so if you were stranded on a desert island and you could have just one luxury item with you, and it can't be a form of transportation. I'm sorry, no Honda Jet. <laughs> <laughs> and it can't have anything that requires mobile service. What would that one luxury item that you can have with you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, you know, without my jet and the ability to save time in life, that, that's, uh, that's our biggest luxury as far as I'm concerned. It's a, it's a very tough question to answer and, uh, as far as items are concerned, Scott. And the reason I say that is this whole COVID pandemic and experience has been so sobering. Uh, a very dear friend of mine has a father on a ventilator right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has been uh, challenging for him and for our friendship and for everyone around him. And we're just, right. you know, a couple of people uh, and there are hundreds of thousands around the country and around the world. Um, so to the, the luxury to me would just be 
more time and you know, my daughters and their violin and, and cello and piano mm-hmm. um, and, and my wife and, and my family and friends. Uh, that's the luxury item that I want. Um, you know, that's what people use our service for is to have a grander experience in life. Uh, so I, I think it would be to create those memories with them until I can figure out how to get off of the island and back to my jets. <laughs> That's a great answer. Uh, Glenn, I really appreciate it. You were a super guest and I learned a lot and I'm sure uh, my listeners learned a lot too. And again, thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. That's it for this episode of the Luxury Item Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this useful and entertaining, I would be really grateful if you can share it with a friend or colleague. I would love it if you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps other listeners find us. The Luxury Item Podcast is a production of Silvertone Consulting. I'm your host, Scott Kerr. Until next time.